Party House Leader. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, it's nice uh, to be here in uh, tourism, arts, culture, and sport. And congratulations, uh, Minister, on your new post. The uh, operators uh, in this uh, sector of the uh, of the economy and of our communities are, are lucky to have you as a minister. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I've been hearing from uh, tourism operators just with respect to a system review that's underway and some, uh, I guess, some suggestions that uh, some of the what has been proposed in a in a um, uh, what has been proposed in a what we heard report is coming across across as being radical or at least further than what they're comfortable with, especially in in recovery mode from from COVID. The the reality is is that many from what I'm hearing, like to get their feet under them and, you know, see some few years of stability before any, you know, major changes or radical changes as they've been framed to me would be, uh, would be put forward. So maybe the minister can provide just a little background uh, on what the out, like what is trying to be achieved from this and uh, what kind of process is being followed. Minister. Thanks for the question. It's nice to see you in here as well. Oh, the member in here as well. I just will be corrected there. It's the end of the day. Um, so the Tourism Task Force asked us to go out and take a look at the resiliency of the sector. Uh, so that's exactly what the ministry did. Um, went out and asked a question. Uh, coming out of COVID, are we well positioned to thrive in a global market? And uh, that uh, consultation or that, that tour took place uh, through roundtables, discussions with everyone right across the province. And all of that information was gathered and it was published in a What We Heard report. And then, so that's what, I think that's the report that the member's referring to. Um, what we were planning to do is to go through that report and look at things that we could take action on that the, the um, industry was asking for. We haven't heard that there's anything radical in it. So if the member has uh, some feedback to give us about how radical the ideas are, we would love to hear it. Member. So I guess there was uh, articulated to me just a little dismay around maybe a lack of engagement with some people who've been involved in tourism uh, over the long over the long term and uh, you know I think um, many of the operators that I speak to are working to try to rebuild their operation and so that's the primary focus and so I, I just you know, I'm just wondering what the minister's sensitivity is to uh, ensuring that the the system the tourism systems that we have in the province um, are not being uh, changed under businesses that are trying to uh, uh, trying to operate. So I, I guess I'm just wondering what the sensitivity is that for the ministry and for the minister going forward uh, in engaging uh, the businesses and and making sure that whatever is adjustments are made is not going to further hamper their ability to restabilize after such a devastating time. Minister, thank you. Um, I understand what the the member is uh, concerned about, um, but I just want to put him at ease uh, through the chair. The What We Heard report was a combination of all of the engagement that we did. So 150 organizations, I think 170 individual um, people. Uh, and if we've missed somebody, um, I would ask the member to make sure that we have that chance to discuss uh, with them what their worries are. But from the What We Heard report, as I mentioned, we will identify things that could possibly be action items, but we will in no way surprise the sector. This will be um, absolutely transparent and with more discussion if we were to move forward on anything. We have no intent of making life harder for folks that are still trying to get back up on their uh, feet and make a go of it. We know that some people are struggling still. Um, we see some parts of the sector doing really well, but um, we know that there's still some problems out there. Uh, best thing to do is to, to uh, have your folks come in and chat with us 
because it's an open door policy and uh, perhaps there's something we can do um, in regards to their particular problems. But um, I appreciate the feedback from the member. Member. Um, I, I didn't suspect that the uh, goal of the ministry was to get in the way of, of the recovery of the industry at all. Um, and, and happy to uh, um, have further conversations about this. I felt like I had to honor some of the conversations that I have heard um, and some of the feedback here in this opportunity. So that's what I've done. And um, we can continue these conversations uh, over the border of Saanich. Um, I have, a, and we can, at that, you know, in that same conversation, probably talk for a long time about repatriation and museums. And uh, I know the minister has heard me talk about this and ask questions in the past. And so I, I could you know, spend today and tomorrow and several days t just asking questions about this. So um, I hope that we can sit down and have a longer conversation about this uh, in future days. I'll just ask, when it comes to repatriation, museums, one of the dismaying um, things that I heard when I was afforded a, a tour of the museum was that there was I guess, uh, consultation done with Indigenous people, and there was a suggestion that they were choosing to leave their sacred items that the museum has in the buildings that have previously been framed as buildings that are going to come down in an earthquake, they're not safe, all of the things that have been said about the buildings uh, over the past year. And when I uh, started to ask around in my community who it was that was consulted as to whether or not we would like our items uh, as families in the building, uh, um, I guess it's over there actually, uh, t technically, uh, at the museum, uh, or if we would like them stored in Colwood, there didn't seem to be any conversation. So I don't know that the minister can necessarily answer this question uh, as to what level of consultation on behalf of RBCM, um, but I will pose it and perhaps maybe a written response back. What is the process to determine which nations were consulted and it, can nations choose to have their items protected in the new building, which has been, frankly, uh, described as being the Cadillac of the buildings? And you know, if we have sacred items, that's where I would prefer our items to be kept, uh, rather than in the building that's been described as the one that's going to fall down. But I just don't know what the uh, what the conversation was with nations and how robust it was. Minister, thank you, Chair. Um, so that was an interesting question. And just so you know that I understand what's happened, um, there was an intent to keep the Indigenous collections in the downtown museum because we were expecting a new building. So now that that's changed, uh, there is room for more discussion on that. And uh, I respect um, what the member is saying about um, expectations. So um, let me just say that the door is open to have those conversations now, and we can have a larger discussion offline about that. Member. That's awesome. I really appreciate the response. Thank you. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, adroitly move to canceled festivals. Can the minister? You know, just switching gears here. Um, there's been an, a number of festivals that unfortunately are suffering right now from, from what we've seen over the last little bit with some announcements. I think the, the largest has been, uh, in the news anyways, the Vancouver Folk Festival is, is it says here it's tentative. I think that it, it's challenged anyways. And um, there's events in Surrey, in Merritt, in Squamish. Has the, what uh, level of engagement has the ministry had in trying to save some of these really important summer festivals? <laughs> Minister. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we announced $30 million to save fairs, festivals, and events. And the uh, Vancouver Folk Festival was one of the ones that um, received funding last year with a $30 million announcement. And I know they've applied for funding for this year. Uh, whether or not they're able to continue on and having a, a festival uh, is yet to be seen. We should be hearing about that in the next couple of weeks. But um, we did recognize that 
many festivals and fairs and events or are not able to use the same business plan they've been using for for the last few years and uh, successfully hold what they want to hold and so we saw that we the thirty thousand dollars is a lifeline to get them through this last year um, hoping that the live audiences will come back and um, we do expect that by next year they'll either have come up with a different business plan to move forward with events uh, or they'll see their audiences returning and ticket sales up and and they'll be fine to carry on but um, we did get a lot of great feedback that people wanted the joy back in the province, and so this was a bit of a joy fund. Member. No doubt it will in inspire much in communities around the province. Was there a thought about perhaps ex extending um, support over the next few years, three years, let's say, so that we can, I mean, like one of the things is it takes a lot of volunteer power mostly to put these events on and it's really the stability of those events. So f from year to year, one of the challenges that we've had since 2019 and with COVID is that the unknown of year over year, was there any thought about maybe ex extending that uh, so that the people who are making the decision now, <laughs> do I continue with this event that seemingly is challenged this year and is likely to be challenged in the coming years? Uh, or do I put my volunteer time somewhere else? We might have been able to have produced a little bit more confidence if we had created a, a, lo a bigger window than that. Was it ever thought or considered, I guess? Minister. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so it, last year when the $30 million was released, it was a, a new fund for fairs and festivals and events right across the province. Um, it was able to uh, provide f um, funds for, I think, 187 communities. There was about 900 applications. Um, and so it really made the difference for a lot of them. We recognize that this year, again, maybe the pressure wasn't uh, the same, but there was still a large pressure. So releasing another $30 million for folks to access, um, we were told that's, that's the lifeline that they needed. Um, but we have seen recovery on attendance, and so I think we'll have to reassess um, where we're at next year. But um, we have confidence that the volunteers are going to come back this year, the audiences are going to come back this year. Um, so if anyone here is thinking about volunteering or attending, please do it. Um, but we, we're confident that we're going to see some positive progress. And so, but if not, we'll have to have another conversation. Member. I was just trying to frame it maybe a little negatively so that then you could deliver the positive message of <laughs> please volunteer for your local festivals and, and events. Um, there was a, just a question with respect to the Belleville Terminal and, and the upgrade that's there. It is a, um, I guess this is probably my final question here, um, just with respect to maybe the involvement of uh, this ministry. I know the Minister of Transportation and others are, are doing work around this. Um, has uh, the ministry taken a supportive role in that, in, in advocating for, you know, I think that whole strip here in the downtown core all the way around to the cruise ship terminal on the other side with you know sh uh, shore power and all of that that would support the tourism industry what level of engagement has you, has the ministry been in that minister thank you uh, thanks for the question so i can um, let the member know that uh, my adm Nick sits on the project board for um, this amazing project. It's the number one infrastructure project that uh, is of concern to the tourism industry here on the island. And uh, so, yes, we are very supportive and we're very involved. Member. Um, thank you. That was the kind of like the lightning round at the end of a long day. So I appreciate uh, the minister's uh, response to my questions and I look forward to working with you and your new portfolio. Thank you.